Hello, this is Rogers Redding, National Coordinator of Football Officials. I want to welcome you to this next in the series of these media and fan videos that we're producing for 2018. I hope these plays will be of interest to you. I picked out a couple of targeting foul plays for this video. We haven't looked at targeting in this series this year, so I want you to see a couple of targeting fouls. In addition to that, the kicking game is always interesting, always some unusual things happening on punts, and so we've got some of those as well. Okay, let's get to the plays. Here we have an interesting face mask foul. We usually think of the face mask foul as someone grabbing the face mask of a ball carrier. But in this case, we have it the other way around. The ball carrier actually grabs the face mask of a guy trying to tackle him. This is a good call. You can see it better on the replay. But this is clearly a foul. And I want you to see it because not always is the face mask committed against the ball carrier. In this case, the face mask foul is committed by the ball carrier himself. Personal foul, face mask. Offense number 13, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. We have a couple of unusual things on this punt play, which I want you to take a look at, and we'll show them to you. First of all, a player of the kicking team goes out of bounds and then comes back in bounds. Now, we've got him circled so that you can see that he goes out of bounds. And the rule is that if a kicking team player goes out of bounds, he just has to stay out of bounds. He cannot come back into the field of play. So that's a foul. That's a flag on the ground for that. And then at the other end of the play where the ball is about to go into the end zone, a player on the kicking team tries to get, keep the ball from going in the end zone. And he actually goes in the end zone and bats the ball back into the field of play. So even though it never touches the ground in the end zone, it's the same as a touchback and they're going to get the ball at the 20-yard line rather than somewhere inside the, goal, inside the field of play near the goal line. So kicking team player going out of bounds, coming back in, that's a foul. And if a player on the kicking team goes in the end zone and bats the ball back into the field of play before it touches the ground in the end zone, then that just means that the receiving team is going to get the ball at the 20-yard line, just the same as if it were a touchback. Number 28, kicking team, went out of bounds on his own, came back in during the down. The penalty is five yards from the succeeding spot, which is a touchback to the 20, out to the 25, first down, Kentucky. I wanted to put a targeting foul on this video, and here's one that is fairly unusual in the sense that it is a foul for a player on the defensive team who's actually trying to make a tackle. But what he does is he uses the crown of his helmet to attack and make forcible contact against this ball carrier. Now the ball carrier is not defenseless, which means that the only way this is going to be a targeting foul is if the crown of the helmet is used in an attack fashion, and that's what happens here. You can see also that it's the player who initiates the contact that is injured on the play. Many times the targeting foul involves an injury to a player receiving the blow. But the rule against using the crown of the helmet in the targeting fashion is specifically there to protect the player who delivers the blow, as in this case. So this is a violent collision, and it also is a targeting foul against the player on the defensive team. You've probably heard me say before in these videos that one of the hardest plays for the officials in the game is what we call catch no catch. In other words, did a receiver really catch the ball before he fumbled it or did it come out as an incomplete pass? Here's a good example of that. You can see that this receiver is trying to catch the ball. He takes a few steps and the ball comes out. And at first it might look like a completed pass and a fumble. But then when you look at it in replay and look at it close up, you can see that in fact he never has control of that ball before it comes out. Now the head linesman comes across and, and signals very strongly incomplete pass. So he sells the call very well, and this is in fact what it is. It is an incomplete pass. The, the receiver does not have that ball in control, and in order to complete the pass, he's got to have it in his possession, control the ball, and then take a couple of steps or do something common to the game. And that doesn't happen here. So this is correctly ruled an incomplete pass. Here's a very tight play for a two-point conversion on the extra point attempt after a touchdown. 
And the question is whether or not the receiver actually catches the ball and gets it into the end zone before it comes out of his hands and arm. If he doesn't control the ball as he goes across the goal line, then it's an incomplete pass. On the other hand, if he gets control of the ball and gets it just across the plane of the goal line, that ball is dead as soon as it penetrates the plane of the goal line and we should have a score. So the ruling on the field here is that it's an incomplete pass, but it goes to replay review and replay determines that in fact the pass was complete and the ball carrier got the ball across the plane of the goal line. Once he gets it across the plane of the goal line, it doesn't matter that it comes out because the ball is already dead. So this is not a fumble. So this is one that was missed on the field. It's easy to see why they might have missed it on the field. And that's one of the reasons why we have instant replay to correct these kinds of plays, especially on scoring plays like this. Here's another punt play where the ball goes close to the goal line. And in this case, the player on the kicking team takes the ball at about the two yard line and it is immediately dead. Now he carries it toward the end zone and flips it back. He's trying to keep the ball from going into the end zone. But the rule is that once the kicking team player gets possession of the ball like this, then it's dead and belongs to the receiving team right at that spot. You can see that the official is right on the goal line. So he's got a really good look at this, at this action and he correctly rules that the ball is dead at about the two yard line. So I just wanted you to see this because these punt plays near the goal line always give us some things to think about. And here's a situation where this player is trying to prevent the ball from going into the end zone because of course, if it goes on in the end zone, it's gonna be a touchback, which would give the ball to the other team out at the 20 yard line. So he chases the ball down and grabs it. And as soon as he gets possession of it, that ball is dead. Here's a targeting foul play that's a little bit unusual. This involves what's sometimes known as a blindside block. The player who receives a blindside block is by definition defenseless. So what you're gonna see on this interception return is that number 56 on the team that intercepted the ball throws a blindside block against the player of the other team. He comes up, thrusts up with his headgear and shoulder and gets him in the helmet. And so this is a targeting foul for contact, forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. Because a player by definition who receives a blindside block is defenseless. So this is one of these hits that we're trying to get out of the game. This is a good call. It's confirmed by instant replay. And so I just wanted you to see this because a blindside block is not all that common. We typically think of, of targeting fouls as, as against, let's say, a receiver who's just caught the ball or trying to catch the ball or a punt receiver. But here's a situation where a block from the blind side is, is executed as a high hit to the head or neck area and this is a targeting foul. Review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. This play shows us an example of the tripping foul. It's illegal to stick your foot out and trip a ball carrier, trip another player and we see that on this play. You're gonna see a player of the defensive team, which we've got circle for you, so you can pick it up easily. He misses the tackle, actually, but then sticks the leg out and trips the ball carrier. You can see this really well from the end zone shot that is toward the end of the play. So this is a foul for tripping, and this is one that we don't see very often, but it's one that the officials are always alert to because, again, it is a dangerous play. So this is a personal foul for tripping the ball carrier. And like all personal fouls, it carries a 15-yard penalty plus an automatic first down. Well, that's it for this time. We'll be back soon with another set of videos for you to look at. In the meantime, have great games this weekend. And if you're traveling, please be safe.